Another thing that I see people doing is, well, what's the furry fandom? Well, uh, we're not about sex, and uh, we're not about uh, fursuit sex, and uh, we're not about porn, and you know what else we're going to do? <laughs> <laughs> Very hey, time. It, it was perfectly timed. I, I, I accept it as an exception. <laughs> we are also not an additional planet in the solar system. We are not a bag of toenails. We are not a new kind of flower. There are 18 trillion things that we're not. So why are we talking about those? <laughs> we're not here to be your bad example. Oh, awesome. yeah, we already have bad examples. We need a bad example. Okay, see this? This is Orem. Don't he, be an orb. He's a bad example. Okay, so moving on. Now, let's say somebody brings up the CSI episode. That's the big one. Everybody's, uh, there's a lot of different ways that the media has had its way with us. <clears throat> but the big one people seem to know about is the CSI episode. There is a way to disarm these people. It is. It really is. Well, that's another thing. That's why a lot of people don't know about it. It's, God, we've got to be at least 10 years old now. That is. But the number one way, and I actually did, I'm going to share a story. In the second year of Furry Fiesta, uh, I did some media interviews. And one of them brought up, I, I did one with the Dallas Morning News. And they're a very <laughs> reputable group, very, very on top. If I was going to do more with the media, I'd want it to be with them. And they asked me, as you would expect, so what about the CSI episode? And I laughed. I said, <laughs> that's just fiction, man. You know that's not real, right? Completely took the wind out of their sails. Because I laughed at it. If I don't take it seriously, you won't take it seriously. And if you don't take it seriously, it loses all of them. It's all about understanding how to, yeah, that's a fair <laughs> reaction. It's all about knowing how to talk to people. And you know what? It is funny. It is. It's a fiction show. You might as well expect to find Smurfs under mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I told somebody that once, and they laughed and took the piss right out of their argument. <laughs> funny how that works. Laughter diffuses anger. They counter each other. It works like a freaking charm. It's only a big deal to us. Most people don't care about the CSI episode. Oh, they had an episode once 10 years ago about a thing. Who cares? I don't care. Most people don't care. Why do we care? Why do we care what a fiction show, a fiction show, said we are? It's a big deal because we make it a big deal. If we don't make it a big deal, it will go away. It will just stop being a thing. I have forgotten, oh, let's be honest, 100% of the TV I watched in 2004. <laughs> <laughs> that can fade too. So let's see, what else we got? Ah, uh, yes. Now, I remember we were talking about the media. Let's talk about what the media is. The media, especially if they show up at a convention, is not here. Well, actually, I'm the media liaison, so yes, they are here to talk to me. But for the most part, let's say they're not here. Okay, they're not here to talk to Orem. Hi, guys. Orem <laughs> is a relatively average person in his own special way. Uh, they're not here to talk to Orem or to you or to you. If you're in this panel, they're probably not here. What they are here to do is talk to, let's say, Sad Unicorn Girl. I'm going to tell you a little story again. First year, Curry Fiesta, I didn't know any better. God, oh, or I remember it said Unicorn Girl. Or is that different no, that was the, no, that's it. We're going to talk about it later. Oh, my God. <laughs> Sad Unicorn Girl had, I'm going to say it's a partial, more like a partial cry for help suit with a She's a unicorn costume, but the horn was very obviously... Let's just say it's not originally a horn. 
Like a lower horn, sort of? <laughs> <laughs> and the, the, uh, the people that showed up wanted to talk to her, and they did. And they got pretty much exactly what they wanted from her. Because she was different, let's say. Uh, she, was, she was real fun to talk to. I can give you that. Uh, they don't want to talk to normal people. They don't want to talk to average people. They don't want to talk to people who can express themselves eloquently. That's the opposite of what they want. They want to talk to people who are interesting in all their own ways. <laughs> it's true. They don't care if someone like Orm or someone like me or someone like you is a normal, average, everyday furry, if we're, if we're bog standard furries. They don't care. The media is not paid the amount of truth they tell. There has never been a media organization that made their money by telling just the truth, only the truth, the entire truth. That doesn't happen. The media are paid by their ratings. Which means that if they could get somebody legally to stand buck naked in the middle of 635, jumping up and down, carrying a big sign, going, look at me, look at me, I guarantee they'd do it. Because it would get them ratings. That's how they make their money. That's how they get ad revenue. Uh, and mail. Mm. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> now here's the trick. These people literally make their living doing this. This is what they do as a job. <laughs> Most of us are pretty good at Okay. Most of you are probably pretty good at your job because you've got experience. This is what you do. Well, this is what they do. They have experience getting you to say things you didn't actually say. They will chop your words up and edit them. They will put them out of context. They will make you say things you didn't mean. And once it's out there, it's gone. You can't ever take it back. Should I take it it? Now we're moving. Get it out of the way. Yeah, I'm going to tell you about it. And I call it it because it is the only name it gets. <laughs> this was our second year. And again, this was the Dallas Morning News, a fairly reputable organization. And I didn't know any better. So they said, hey, let's an interview with Bobby. And I was like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so we're sitting in the lobby. And we're chatting. And we're it's going fairly well. And it walks in. Well, it much It, it, no, what was it? Yeah. <laughs> okay, let me explain it to you, all right? It was about a little over six feet tall, pasty white. Like, makes me look like Jamaican. <laughs> Seriously, and I know that I, if I stand in front of paper, you can't see me. Gangly. Hairy. Now, this alone isn't too bad. No, it is. No, no, it, 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 it doesn't get bad. <laughs> it doesn't get bad until I tell you what he's wearing. What he's wearing is a garish, screaming, shocking pink ballerina uh, outfit with the tutu no, and no. nothing else. No. And the photographer who comes in, does her job, and, <clears throat> sorry, flashback, yeah. uh, <laughs> she says, can I get a picture of you? And he goes, yeah! So he starts posing for the Dallas Morning News in the hotel lobby, as you might expect. And I'm standing behind the photographer going, <laughs> and he looks over her shoulder. And remember, six feet tall, gangly, pasty white dude. And gives me one of these. Oh. I'm just like, <laughs> if I could explode you with sheer hatred, I would. <laughs> and I had to take the photographer aside and I had to tell her, look, because this was our second year. 
tell her, look, this is not what we're about. I don't know who that guy is. This could be really damaging to us. This could, could really do some damage to our convention. Please don't print that. And she told me, I'll talk to my editor, but I can't promise anything. And you know what? It's not her fault. She's doing her job. If she goes in to her editor with a bunch of pictures and those big blank spot in the middle, she's going to lose her job. It's not fair to ask her not to print. Now, I went through the entirety of that day, because the, the interview was in the early morning, the entirety of that Friday, walking around with the con chair smile, going, hey, oh God, oh God, oh God, what could possibly go wrong? Oh God, oh God, oh God. <laughs> and Saturday, first thing Saturday morning, I get on my radio, I'm just like, I'm going to go buy a paper. And I had to visit several places, because of course, the first few places I went to were out of paper. Uh, and I open it up, and there's Stargazer, who is currently in the board gaming room, wearing his pith helmet on Hunter Gear, and it looks awesome. I'm just like, oh, God. <laughs> because they could have destroyed us. They could have absolutely wrecked us. They could have created a situation where there would be no free guest abuse. But thankfully, they were nice decided not to use that photograph, even though it would have been very... Damaging. Damaging is a word that I could have used, I, I would use. Um, it would have been a little bit like a media-based version of a nuclear explosion. <laughs> now, here's the trick. What would do if the media shows up? I'm going to throw this out. Okay, you see a reporter. You see... You see you, I'm not even going to go there. You see somebody with a camera, big shoulder mounted, professional looking camera. What's the first thing you do? Somebody, anybody? Right, show of show hands. Would you believe that is one of the least common answers and it is the only true one? Most people say go find a member of staff. Some people, I've had people say other things that I don't care about. Um, See if they have a badge. The fact of the matter is, and most media have not caught on to this yet, and please God, they never will. If somebody is a member of Furry Fiesta, meaning they're carrying a Furry Fiesta badge, and they're filming, we're not going to stop them. It's just that simple. Unless it is glaringly, freakishly obvious that they are using their, they're going to use their footage like if they have Fox 4 on the side of, the side of their camera, yes, we're going to stop them. <laughs> but aside from that, no, because Furry Fiesta members are allowed to film for personal use. So, let's say you've looked at this person and they don't have a badge. They're not a member. What do you do? There's always been a badge. Like, hey, we've got this person here filming on, on, on a Thor, hey guys. On, I'm wanting the staff. Okay. That's one of the steps, but it's not the next step. You ask them to stop filming. Incorrect. Yes. You never have. Well, let me put it this way. Let's say you're a reporter, right? Okay, you're a reporter for Fox News. This is how you make your living, right? Okay, I'm just some random dirt. I don't know. They're like, hey, you have to stop filming. You know what you're going to say? <laughs> no, I don't. Who are you? In fact, let's get a good shot of you. First article. Yeah, they're not going to just listen to you if you say stop filming. Because who the hell do you? The good news is they don't know yet, but that's beside the point. Do you ask them why they're filming? It doesn't matter. The first thing you do, if you have, if we're of a mind to do so, you don't have to. Ask them if they know what registration is. And if they don't know, offer to take them. Take them, you know, hey, I, I know we can find a staff member and find registration, come on. Take them with. You know? If they go to registration, great. Actually, find the staff member first. The point is that if you look them out of your site, they're like roaches, man. You see them and they're just like, <laughs> they're gone, man. They're, they're in a crack of the wall you never even saw. But if you stay with them, and you kind of just kind of heard a staff report them, or, hey, Guardian. <laughs> uh, then you have a better chance of stopping them from doing whatever nefarious plan they're working on. Now, let's say 
you found a staffer. Okay. What do you tell them? Anyone? Now, I have seen this in the past, and this went about as atrociously as you would expect. I have seen somebody walk up to staff and say, there's a guy over there. He's totally filming us right now. He's with the media. He's going to put us on the news. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> because that creates what is politely known as a panic. Furries panic when they think the media is present. It's true. It happens. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's helpful. But it's true. Don't do that. You take the staffer aside. And you tell them, hey, uh, there's a guy over there with a camera, and uh, he's, uh, he's, not, he's not bad. I don't know what he's thinking about that. And you know what you do after that? Walk away. And you walk away. Because you just handed it off to staff. And staff have media people, or they have, they have some way to take care of this. Don't spread it around. Remember what I just said about panic? That's still a thing. So that's what you do with the media show. Now, if they're legit, they will have a staffer with them already. They will have somebody walking with them. Now, I can tell you that there's no, there's no media currently planned to be at FERC 2014. But if there were, I would be walking with them as they film, because you don't want them to walk into, say, the art show. Not because there's nasty, naughty stuff there, although there is, um, but because, well, it's an art show and you don't film an art show. And that would be the one thing they would show. That, well, that, the dealer is in, uh, things like that. Now, <laughs> an extra challenge this year is an artist tally, because that's right up there. But, well, I'm, I'm still. Uh, let's see, what else we got?